The IL-1-14-300, a modernized turboprop regional airliner that was revived by PJSC EL as a completely Russian component program, has quietly returned to the skies over southern Siberia for one of the most critical chapters in an aircraft's life, the certification campaign. The type conducted a concentrated test program from gorno altaysk Airport in late October when flight test activity shifted to the Altai Republic. Those flights are not just regular tests. They are designed to put the airframe, engines, avionics, and operational procedures through tough conditions to check if the IL-1-14-300 can reliably operate in the most difficult areas of Russia. So what do modes and certification programs mean in practice? The statement in Russian press releases that the tests will evaluate the maximum number of modes under several certification programs is a shortened version of a well-defined and specific set of flight test objectives. The announcement is explicit in its intent. The test campaign concentrates on the operational suitability of off-base and transit aerodromes, the evaluation of international air routes, and navigation modes associated with mountain flight. In other words, the term modes in this context denotes the flight regimes and avionics navigation configurations that an aircraft must display to ensure safe operation in a specific environment. These configurations include combinations of altitude, airspeed, engine power, approach and missed approach procedures, and navigation aid usage. Testing these regimes puts the aircraft's systems, crew procedures, and performance envelopes to the test in thin air, rough terrain, and non-standard airfields. To grant airworthiness and operational approvals, Russian civil aviation authorities and, where applicable, partner states or international entities require formal sets of trials and documentation packages. Certification programs encompass these requirements. This program involves the validation of the IL-1-14-300 across a variety of mission types, including commercial scheduled operations, including international sectors, operations into austere and unpaved runways, performance in mountainous approach and departure profiles, and the reliable operation of navigation and safety systems in those modes. Accordingly, the campaign comprises logistical ground handling demonstrations, operational trials on representative routes, avionics, navigation validation, and aircraft performance testing, all of which are documented and analyzed for the certification dossier. You might ask what the rationale behind the selection of the Altai Republic for these flights. The Altai Republic provides an ideal environment for testing the endurance of the L-1-14-300's off-field and mountain capabilities. The Republic lies in southern Siberia, where the Altai mountain range rises to some of the region's highest peaks. It is characterized by a combination of deep river valleys, steep ridgelines, and widely varied elevations within relatively short distances. gorno altaysk the capital of the Republic and the location of these tests, is situated on the western border of the mountainous region and serves as a gateway between highland communities and lowland transport corridors. The climate is continental, characterized by frigid, snowy winters and warm summers, as well as significant periodic and seasonal temperature fluctuations that influence engine performance, aerodynamics, and runway surface conditions. Altai is a great natural place for flight tests because its geography and weather help show that the IL-1-14-300 can safely and reliably operate in tough conditions. The logistical backbone for the Altai testing was provided by gorno Altaysk Airport, which is just a few kilometers from the urban center and serves the city. The test team was provided with infrastructure and ground services by local airport authorities, which are part of the SPUR Group network and operate under a regional structure. These services include aircraft parking stands that are suitable for stationing prototypes, refueling and electrical supply, security and airfield services, and premises for flight crews and engineers. The airport size is modest in comparison to major hubs. However, it is capable of accommodating scheduled connections to larger Russian cities and the turnaround duties necessary for a flight test program. Additionally, the equipment supports turboprop operations 
and transitory aircraft. The IL-114-300 crew required this combination of access and an environment that was representative of regional operations to validate the performance of transit aerodromes and off-bases. In addition to services, airports like gorno Altaysk provide the non-technical assets that are indispensable for certification work. These assets include the capacity to collaborate with regional authorities on restricted airspace and test corridors, the on-the-ground accommodation necessary for engineering staff, and experienced local air traffic services. These parts help reduce logistical problems and allow flight test schedules to concentrate on specific tasks, like flying in mountains, using short or unpaved runways, and checking cross-border routes, without wasting time on regular support issues. The Altai government and the airport's leadership were explicitly thanked by Rostec and PJSC ill for their support, a customary acknowledgement that underscores the intersection between state infrastructure and aviation initiatives during such programs. Let's now discuss the circumstances and significance of the detour to Baikonur. A single L1-14300 prototype conducted a series of international flights, including an intermediate landing at Craney, Craney Airport in Baikonur, making it one of the most noteworthy activities during the test period. Infrastructure that is predominantly dedicated to space operations, including an airport capable of accommodating jet and turboprop traffic, is located in Baikonur, a city that was built to serve the Cosmodrome and is administered by Russia under a long-term lease. Craney Airport lies on the right bank of the Sir Darya River, a short distance west of the Baikonur settlement. The Cosmodrome's logistical chain links it to accommodate both scheduled and special mission aircraft. The il 114 300s stop at this location indicates two practical points. The aircraft's capacity to operate on cross-border international routes and its suitability for transit stops at facilities that are operationally significant but are not major commercial hubs. Operational context and distance are relevant. The great circle distance between gorno Altaisk and Baikonur is approximately 1,790 kilometers, which is a significant sector for a regional turboprop and a valuable trial for fuel planning, navigation, and overflight procedures. The segment demonstrates the type's ability to conduct medium-range hops between regional centers, even those situated beyond the dense airline networks of Western Russia. The Baikonur landing is of additional interest due to the fact that the city and Cosmodrome have been leased and administered by Russia under agreements with Kazakhstan since the 1990s. Consequently, operations are conducted in a distinct legal and organizational environment compared to purely domestic flights, and the test team is exposed to international overflight and arrival procedures under these bilateral arrangements. Baikonur City and the Cosmodrome continue to be an atypical administrative case. The territory is in Kazakhstan, but it is leased to and administered by Russia under formal agreements that specify the Cosmodrome's operation, security, and jurisdiction. Within the geographic and administrative complex, the airport at Baikonur, Kraney, serves to facilitate both space operations and the corresponding logistics. In practice, this implies that flights to Baikonur are subject to special procedures and coordination between Russian and Kazakh authorities. The IL-1-14-300 crew was able to test these procedures under real-world conditions while operating there. In summary, the landing at Kraney was not only an airworthiness exercise, but also an operational rehearsal for the cross-border missions that the type may undertake on behalf of regional carriers. Let's look at the intended function of the IL-1-14-300 as revealed by the experiments. The IL-1-14-300 is being built to fill a specific niche, a rugged, short-to-medium-range turboprop that can operate from shorter and even unpaved strips, a platform that can be deployed on international regional sectors where overflight coordination and operations from non-standard airfields are necessary and a plane that can serve communities that are isolated by mountains, sparse infrastructure, and seasonal weather. 
The Altai Flying and the Baikonur Run exemplify these features. Concentrated efforts are required to address terrain-referenced procedures, obstacle clearance margins, engine and propeller behavior at altitude, and the integration of navigation systems that must function in the absence of ground-based nav aids. Such an approach is indicative of the concentration on navigation modes for mountain flights. The run to Baikonur underscores the importance of planning for operational reliability on transit stops that lack the full-service profile of a metropolitan hub. The process of certification involves conservative margins, documentation, and repetition. Passing tests in the Altai and demonstrating international sectors that include stops such as Baikonur do not in themselves guarantee commercial success. However, they do satisfy critical criteria. The aircraft systems must operate predictably in mountain and extreme weather conditions. Crews must be capable of safely managing approaches and missed approaches in confined airspace and valleys, and ground teams must be able to service and turn the aircraft in remote facilities. Proof that an aircraft can perform this task sustainably is essential for any procurement. Russia's dispersed and often unforgiving regional network requires both certifications and extensive distances into communities with inadequate infrastructure. Consequently, the test program for the IL-1-14-300 is as much about demonstrating operational resilience as it is about fulfilling regulatory requirements. In conclusion, the IL-1-14-300's flights in the Altai Republic and the detour to Baikonur are a succinct narrative of contemporary aircraft development that is unfolded in contrasting environments. The program is confronted with the operational and administrative realities of international regional work at Baikonur, while the basic physics of altitude, weather, and terrain are confronted in the mountains of Altai. Both are essential for the certification of a type that is being proposed for Russia's regional network, which is frequently unforgiving and dispersed. If the campaign is successfully finished, the IL-1-14-300 will have the necessary qualifications for a new regional airliner, such as proven mountain navigation skills, recorded abilities to land outside of regular airports, and real-world experience in international routes. We flew on the route Gornotais Baikonur. The flight was successful with all planned tests conducted efficiently. The assessment noted excellent performance of aircraft systems with feedback highlighting notable details on operational accuracy and reliability. A total of 114 300 aircraft are currently in the final stages of certification testing. At the moment, we are assessing navigation modes, primarily those associated with flights in mountainous terrain. We are assessing aircraft on international routes, and we are assessing the operational feasibility of non-basic transit airfields. The tests are going well. In the near future, we plan to finish the work in Gornaltaisk and return the aircraft. On the base, in order to complete the certification tests, I would like to express special gratitude to the leadership of the Altai Republic the management of Gorno Altaisk Airport, as well as the management of the state corporation uh, Roscosmos, the Zinki Airport in Baikonur, who provided us with the opportunity to conduct successful tests. It is a great honor and responsibility for us to take part in the implementation of the state project. Testing of new aviation equipment is always a landmark event, which falls on the share of not every airport. This reflects the robust infrastructure, the expertise of personnel, and preparedness to navigate complex challenges, underlining a profound level of institutional trust. We are happy to cooperate. With the team of the Sergei Vladimirovich Ilyushin Aviation Complex, and we are proud that we were able to take part in the implementation of the state missile defense system. If you think the video was informative, please like, subscribe, and share. Please also take membership of the channel to encourage us